as you all know, uh, we have many beautiful sponsors that are helping us in this journey for this coffee break. Yes. And uh, one one of our sponsors, you can see, is St. James Coffee. St. James Coffee. Shout out. Yes. They're, they're <laughs> wonderful, wonderful mission. Their mission is to have a coffee house where one can share their faith. There's also a chapel within the coffee house. Mm -hmm. It's a very welcoming area. It puts into effect what the whole evangelization is all about. And so they mm -hmm. offer you, us, um, beautiful coffee. There's a lot of different materials of coffee, but also tea too as well. So if you're ever hungering for some good coffee, mm -hmm. good fellowship, please stop and by by St. James. Welcome everyone to Coffee Break. I'm Ayla Todd. This is Father Tay. Cheers. And this is Abby Lang, our special guest for the week. So... Thanks, Abby, for joining us. Thank you for having me. So today we're going to be talking a little bit about friendship and what is friendship, what is a holy friendship, and how to distinguish the two and kind of hear from personal experience from Miss Abby Lang over here. So, Abby, in your very astute opinion, <laughs> what is a friendship? Um. So... At least for me, um, I just like my own personal like mm -hmm. research and just reading your style <laughs> a lot because I'm a philosophy nerd. Um, yes. A lot of what, to boil it down, a lot of what friendship has to do um, is a mutual investment in another person. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it, that can look different depending on the relationship. Um, and you're closest with them. Uh, Aristotle talks about three different types. Uh, friendship of virtue, where you're both having the same values and you're helping each other in the betterment of those values. There's the friendship of pleasure, where you both really enjoy spending time with each other, doing things like going to different events or activities mm -hmm. or have mutual hobbies. And friendships of use or utility, these are often people that you can see as maybe like coworkers or classmates, um, people who maybe you interact with when there's a common need or goal um, or necessity, but maybe outside of the context of like your workplace or your the classroom you, or like a sports team or activity, you may not necessarily interact with that person as much. Nice. So then, what would you define as a holy friendship? Holy friendship. Um, <laughs> I'm sure Father has thoughts on this, too. Sure. Um, but, at least for me per personally, a holy friendship is often seen as that friendship of virtue that Aristotle talks about. Mm -hmm. um, those are friendships who help you grow in virtue and help you become a much holier person and help you lead you to St. Hug. Mm -hmm. um, I know from my personal experience, those are often the people who encourage me to go to Mass more, to receive the sacraments, mm -hmm. um, to pray more, um, to invest in that relationship with Christ more, <laughs> and to also invest in me um, and get to know me, not just in the context of the spiritual life well so mm -hmm. outside of that context too yeah being able to have those check-ins and you know as cringy as it sounds asking you how's your heart doing <laughs> <laughs> you know making that genuine you know effort to mm -hmm. care and learn more about you and how you're doing and you know how's prayer life going and questions like that mm -hmm. i think that's important to do I, nice. I mean, you, you ladies kind of hit it pretty well, which is um, the, friend, holy, the holiness of our friendship is really kind of going back to like uh, a good analogy is love, right? You know, St. Thomas Aquinas says to love is to will the good of the other. So, mm -hmm. so in the friendship, am I being a good friend enough to challenge you when you need it to be challenged? Am I a good friend enough to speak the truth even though it might not be welcomed, right? <laughs> <laughs> At the time. and But most importantly, how do I view you and your value more than just what you can offer for me, right? So there's a very fine line between having affections for a friend versus, like, the utilitarianism, right? Mm -hmm. Well, this friend is good just to have because I can just... She's always a sounding board, and she'll say whatever I want to hear. No, no, mm -hmm. right? So that's not really being a good friend. A good friend says, you are made in the image likeness of God, 
And so how do I interact with you that will uphold your value as a human being, right? right? Mm -hmm. um, and this type of language isn't really used a lot in our world because we've used the word good for so much things, right? Mm -hmm. And so when a person's definition of a good friendship could be simple as, well, they're always there for me. And Aristotle's a good job, right? He mm -hmm. says, yeah, that's one thing, right? <laughs> what, what's, what's, what's next? Are there any more things than just uh, being there? You know, mm -hmm. um, and so like the, the the philosophy of virtue encompasses that, right? Are you virtuous in your thoughts? Are you virtuous in your speech? Are you virtuous in your actions? Like that's what a good friend is taking all that to account, and then just kind of helping you grow by noticing, observing those things, and then asking you for more input for those things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think those friendships of virtue also help you ward off some of that spiritual warfare as well that we talked about in our last video. Mm -hmm. And they can mm -hmm. be a good sounding board to go to and receive those graces of love and virtue and tell you, you know, like, hey, things are kind of bleak right now, but they're going to get better. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is just rely on God. Come to me with troubles and worries and you know, I'll be there for you, but ultimately redirect those thoughts to God, even though you may not feel his presence right now. It's more than a feeling. And I think that's what we get caught up with in spiritual warfare a lot mm -hmm. is, mm -hmm. you know, I don't feel close to God. I don't yeah. feel his presence or yeah. I'm not getting anything out of prayer. Well, the, that's the time to like really turn to him and mm -hmm. draw closer. Mm -hmm. And I think it's also going off of what you say important, Ayla, to remember that Christ is the center and that your friends, although they may support you, they aren't your savior. Right. Mm -hmm. They're gonna just point you to the savior. Yep. Mm -hmm. They're not they're they're not perfect. They're gonna fail you at times. Mm -hmm. But remembering that if they're pointing you to Jesus, to our Savior, mm -hmm. that's one the important thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. So then going off of, you know, having those friendships of, you know, virtue and then not so much within the virtue realm um can you tell us like an example during your life when you yeah. had that <laughs> i think just kind of reflecting on my own life um i recognize during much of high school a lot of my friendships were very rooted in academic accomplishments and activities we were all in a lot of the same activities in the same classes we were all multi AP class each year. Um, I took like two or three AP classes every year. My friends took more we're, and we're averaging about five AP classes a year. So we were all like very <laughs> studious, very much nerds. <laughs> um, and so we took a lot of value and in that academic accomplishment and in those activities that we were involved in, we were all athletes and we were all um, involved in some other activities too um and so coming to college after having those types of friendships my freshman year i really found a group of friends that were all very wanting to help me grow outside of just the academic realm and the activities realm but also mm -hmm. grow closer to christ and i got to have just the joy and the blessing of having friendships of virtue mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I felt I was extremely grateful for all of that. We, we, Ayla being one of them I met later on. Um, <laughs> but with that, there was also struggles. I also found that there were maybe people who knew or had some sort of relationship with my friends of virtue who maybe weren't the most virtuous. Um, there was one who really just struggled with um, some bad habits. They weren't a bad person. Mm. They were still a very good person. They really wanted to grow deep in their faith, but they had struggles that they had to work through, such as just like their relationship with alcohol and their relationship with other worldly things like their identity mm -hmm. outside of their friendships or their love life or their relationship with alcohol. And so in that relationship i really recognized that it was hard to maybe have that friendship of virtue with someone who was struggling to grow in virtue themselves 
not to say that I couldn't help them grow in virtue, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. it wasn't leading me towards virtue. And so mm-hmm. having to have that <clears throat> level of boundaries with them that mm-hmm. I maybe wasn't going to go to them for certain things or discuss certain things with them or maybe have only so much time that I was spending with them mm-hmm. in certain ways. Um, and just having really good boundaries with them. And that took practice and experience. And it was something that you ha- that just takes time to learn to do. Um, and there, so that was one relationship that I really had to learn. And I think there was like one other, throughout my th- almost four years in college now, I just finished my third year. Um, there was another friendship that I've struggled with too. and. In that friendship, you know, they're a great person, very on fire for Christ, but the way we interact with each other doesn't necessarily always bring out the most virtuous behavior. Mm -hmm. And, um, Eli, when you, you had mentioned with, when we were talking about holy friendships, this idea of checking in on each other and that Mm -hmm. often wasn't something that happened in that friendship. It was, I often felt very called out it was it felt much more like a call out rather than a Mm check-in and there was a lot less in that thing there was a lot less questions being asked like how are you hey i noticed these things are you okay and it was Mm -hmm. much more like why do you do this yeah it was very why are you doing this (laughs) yes very accusatory and it was it was hard i tried to really extend that person a lot of grace but it was at times challenging Mm -hmm. because I felt very accused and very attacked and so there was a lot of growth in that of realizing like okay this isn't a friendship of virtue and Mm -hmm. like I said with the other example of like figuring out boundaries in relationships like that's a very important thing for us Mm -hmm. whether that's our relationship with people or with work or Mm -hmm. whatever else in life and so I think that that was a big learning thing that I had to grow in is being able to not only recognize that holy friendship, but also recognize the unholy ones and having boundaries with those who maybe aren't the most virtuous Mm -hmm. or leading me towards Christ. Yeah. I think it's a fine line between, you know, having those moments in friendships where, you know, you talk to them and you're like, hey, I noticed this is going on in your life. How are you doing? And then jumping into the you know, well, there's some advice I could give you in all of this, or the other extreme where it's like, why are you doing this? I don't understand. You can't do these things and do this at the same time and grow in virtue and blah, 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 blah. You know, it's it's a fine line between that check-in and Mm call-out. Between things and conversation. Yeah, for sure. (laughs) Do the highway merger. Sweet. And we're back. We're back. We're back. (laughs) So, where was I? Talking about, um, you know, having... Check-in versus call-out. Yeah, having that check-in versus call-out. I know we had an experience with a mutual friend of ours where we had to kind of do that check-in moment. And it was kind of a delicate situation with us. And we were praying about it for months, trying to figure out, you know, okay, what's the best way to approach this person? How are we going to talk to them about X, Y, and Z that we've noticed? And... You know, we don't want to come off as accusatory. We just want to be able to, you know, have this chat with them and say, you know, we've noticed you're doing X, Y, and Z, and it's making these people feel uncomfortable. It's making us feel uncomfortable. You know, we just want to make sure that you're doing okay, and we what's want to worth, leave you. Yeah, like what's worth bringing. I think in that situation too, it was a lot of mm-hmm. we debated it back and forth for like two weeks of like, <laughs> what should we say? What's mean it to say? What's not? going to be necessary or helpful or loving in this situation yep and we did a lot of spiritual direction too <laughs> during yeah. that month we are figuring out what to do very thankful for spiritual direction through all of that amen um, <laughs> and stuff and we both had to recognize like the relationship we had with that person like mm-hmm. because the relationship we have is maybe different than the relationship we have with each other Mm -hmm. and so what we can how we can approach them is very different than how like we approach each other right uh, because of the friendship we have and that relationship and 
you know, when you are closer with someone, you know, you can approach them in a different way mm -hmm. and be able to be maybe more direct with them about things or be, say certain things you couldn't say to someone you aren't as close with or say in the same way because it's not going to come across the same way. Right. I think, <laughs> I think it's a lost art in today's world, right? Of, um, you know, like COVID kind of ruined my I talk about COVID, but it's kind of true. If we thought we were isolated a lot before COVID happened, um, after uh, and then the part of COVID, it's kind of intensified the isolation. Like people just don't know how to talk to other people. It like, ruined just, everyone's social skills. <laughs> yeah, no, and, and like that's that's the part about friendship now is like everyone's so hostile. Kids feel so awkward, even adults, because mm -hmm. we we were never really taught of like why am I being friends with this person? Like, mm -hmm. is it a pity? Do I pity these persons of being friends with them, or do I really see us having connection and common ground? Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. and like do, what, what you guys just, just described is so hard. Is be, is because I feel like, especially from a guy's perspective, right? It's either like you just ghost them because like this is awkward. We don't talk about our, our emotions at all, or you become a complete jerk and be like, "This is all I know." You either cut off them. It's like a bad breakup, right? You start ignoring people and then you let them off like that, or. You know, you become a total jerk and to drive the person away. So therefore, it's not your fault. It's it's their fault, right? Mm -hmm. But a really good friend, like you said, takes a look at the bigger picture, right? Mm -hmm. uh, like even though your your way that you're talking to me is kind of abrasive, I might not like it. But at the same time, but we're all in this together. So how do I? If I have to let the friendship go, how do I do it in, in, in the nicest way mm -hmm. that allows us to learn from this experience, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I think, and this is where like I've been praying a lot uh, for our parish and for any of our friendship and young adults is like, do we know how to even be friends? Because these are life skills that you need to have. Mm -hmm. Right. Some people they they say, well, I just don't hang out out with everyone. You like. You can't do that in the real world. You can't just ghost people, right? Like, can you imagine going to your job? Well, I don't like this boss, so I'm just gonna not respond to my emails. Well, good luck. You'll be all in the streets, right? Right, right. So there's, there's I a, tried that. He keeps finding me. Right, right, right. So, 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 so there, 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 there's an etiquette to do, uh, you know, you know, uh, to do all, 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 all of these things. If I can't talk, but, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, and so, and so we, we're hoping that this video will kind of help you to, in, in, you know, you know, in, in that manner. Um, so it's not about touchy feely stuff, right? It's more about like, okay, I view this friend as a good person. I want to grow, and pretty soon from that affection grows more of the, the family feel, right? Uh, picking back of C.S. Lewis, right? You go from the friendship to the affection of like the familial, right? The family aspect. Like, I no longer view you just a friend, but you're so close. Like I consider you my sister, or or even or even my my brother. You're so incorporated to my life, to my family's mm -hmm. life, right? And so, how do we help people navigate through all of that, right? Because we don't talk about this mm -hmm. at all. So I think by having this video, hopefully, it would encourage <clears throat> everyone who's listening to this video um, to really ask yourself, like, why do I go deeper with, with my friends, right? Why can't we go deeper? I think everyone else wants to go deeper. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's the next question. How do you develop that Christ-centered focus into your friendship? Mm -hmm. Do you want to start or do you want me to start? <laughs> My mind immediately went to jump to prayer. <laughs> sure, know. sure. You sure. know, if this person really means that much to you and you want to have them in your life, God will let you know that, mm -hmm. you know? That's why we rely heavily on prayer is because God is our closest friend. He knows us better than ourselves and he'll tell you who's meant to be in your life and who's not. And I think that's one of the biggest things that we forget to rely on is listening to our creator who knows what we need and what we don't need. Mm -hmm. So, And I think also too in a more kind of outside of prayer and remind you of something that um, one of my old bosses in the ministry realm told me was invite, invite, invite. <laughs> and mm -hmm. um, it's just that constant, just like Christ invites us in many ways in the sacraments and in other ways to draw closer to him, mm -hmm. we also need to invite others to do the same. And so I think it's a twofold thing, like you yes. need to invite them to do the fun stuff, but also 
invite them into the messy stuff yes. too. Yep. And so, you know, if you just invite them to the fun stuff, then it's just a friendship of pleasure. And if you just invite them for maybe the messy stuff or to just listen to you, then that's more of a friendship of use. But yep. when you invite both, mm -hmm. yep. that's when it becomes a friendship of virtue. I love what you said, ladies, because mm -hmm. it, I think it requires humility and that openness to be vulnerable, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I could make myself vulnerable and they could run with this, right? Tell people all of my secrets. Mm -hmm. But at some point, you, you have to trust and let go. And sometimes you know, you, that trust could be betrayed. That's that's why friendship is hard. There, there could be that possibility. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but with our faith, it says, I, why do I worry about that? Or, right, we keep inviting Christ and trusting in his in, in his care and his providence. If that friendship is not meant to last, he'll re, he'll he'll return that friendship to you. he'll say yeah I'm keeping this friendship because you don't need this person. Or mm -hmm. if he wants you to remain friendship, he'll return that friendship back to you to bless it and, and to multiply the graces you know that really comes from, comes from it. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's awesome. Um, so I encourage all of you who are listening, you know, to really ask yourself that and look at your friend groups, right? That's, that's a true test. Do I only invite them when I'm going out? <laughs> How come they're not there when I'm praying? How come they're not there when I when I need a show to cry on? Do it. And, and what about our conversations? Are we able to go deep when we need to? Mm -hmm. And then at other moments, can we hold back and have just fun? Because I need I'm a little stressed out. I need whatever, right? So this is all the balance. And I love what you said, guys, earlier about prayer. If we don't practice it within ourselves first with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Friendships can be very, very difficult mm -hmm. because we've never learned to listen. I think that's another good skill to have is just to listen, right? To be there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're living in a world where um, I, I worry for this younger generation <laughs> because we overshare things so quickly mm -hmm. that we don't know how to filter and say, okay, this is confidential, which means I tell no one, <laughs> right? This is how I build trust versus, you know, but this person really asked me, and if I really care, I I, I should show concern by letting people in the loop and you're like, mm -hmm. but you don't have the right to that, right? Mm -hmm. right? Some friendships, and the, the, especially when you, this word the scriptures say, right? Be careful that you you don't throw pearls before the swine. I think that's why people are so scared to be learned by their friendship. Mm -hmm. What if I told you my relationship with Jesus and it doesn't turn out well, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone's going to know I'm a Jesus freak, right? But that's, that's all part of life. That's why Holy Friendship says, I've been hurt, but I continue to be smarter, to be more prudent, and the graces that I share. It doesn't mean that I just shut myself off completely from people, right? Mm -hmm. I, I open myself to a point where I'm like, okay, can I trust you, right? And all mm -hmm. these other things. Yeah. We can keep going. I'm, I'm talking, talking about this I, <clears throat> because I, I love this stuff. Because I think this is where, you know, um, you often hear us, why, why do we need to pray? It's for these reasons. You learn how to listen. You learn how to be closer to Jesus. Mm -hmm. which then helps us to um, develop those healthy relationships and those boundaries mm -hmm. uh, to us. So I encourage you, right? I'm, am I saying to you, for you to drop some friends? No, I'm saying like... <laughs> just examine a, it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, we're all asking you just to really pray with Jesus yeah. and saying, okay, Lord Jesus, if I were to live more closely for you, are the people that I'm surrounded with, are they helping me grow closer to you or are they pulling me away from you, right? Mm -hmm. And that's hard. But I love Jesus to teach you because, you know, we all had all those friends where we had to kind of let go and say, I'm sorry, this is not um, what, I'm, uh, what I'm what all about, you know. Um, even for my own life, quickly here, like for when, I, when I became a priest, people looked at me like, oh, you became the priest? What? Right? You know, I just, uh, <clears throat> I was the jokester a little bit when I was younger. And so, but now going back to my own time, I'm pretty sure all of you felt it, right? You go mm -hmm. back, you're more mature. And all your old buddies are like, hey, let's hang out. And you're like, and you know, especially with small towns, right? Because I know the main complaints I hear from college kids and high schoolers like, Father, all you want to do is get drunk, right? And, <laughs> and do stupid things. And you're like, yep. that was probably a phase when we were in high school. But like, I get weird when I ask them, like, don't you want more? Right? right? We're not even talking about God. We're just asking them life goals. Do you want more? Why, why aren't you happy, right? And they look, they look at us like, you think you're better than us? And we're like, no, but I know that there are other things in life mm -hmm. which I can achieve for, right? Mm -hmm. So I just encourage you to follow Jesus more in, in, in your life. And then we pray that uh, you bring all your friends, put into the hands of Jesus. And you teach me now. Teach me what friendships were good, what friendships were not good, and then show me the way to do it. Mm -hmm.
So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Abby, yeah, for, thanks, for your Abby. wisdom <laughs> and for being a guest appearance. Yes. Bye. Sacred heart of Jesus, I love you from so deep inside. I give you my life, and within you I hide. Till the end of the age I will rest in you Till the end of my day